Right. Shall we begin? Yeah. At the beginning. Wait, what um, yeah. Are we all ready? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Good to go. A play reading of Alice in Wonderland. Place, Wonderland. Time, Wonderland is timeless. Our cast and their characters. Lucy, Alice, Amy, Rabbit, Andy, Mad Hatter, Jay, Queen of Hearts, Bryony, Duchess and White Queen, Jenny, Caterpillar and King of Hearts, Sam, Dormouse and Knave of Hearts, Ella, Hare, Cook, Griffin, Liz, Frog, Others, Jewelry, Georgie, Tweedledum, Mandy, Tweedledee, me, Kate, Direction, Mock Turtle, and all. Act one. Scene. A curtain stage, empty except for a definite shaft of light coming obliquely from above and striking the floor out of sight off stage. At rise of curtain, the white rabbit hurries on with a high leap, fanning himself rapidly. He stops, takes a watch from his waistcoat pocket, holds it in the shaft of light and shakes his head. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, the Duchess, I will be late. A little scream from above startles the rabbit. Oh, 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 oh. oh my ears and whiskers. The rabbit simply... Still off stage. Oh, my ears and whiskers, something has fallen into my rabbit hole. Sounds like a little girl. Down, down. Alice. I wonder where I'm falling to. It talks. It is a little girl. Still off stage. I was going to fall as if I think I shall think nothing of falling downstairs. I shouldn't say a word, even if, if I fell on top of the house. Which is very likely. Nothing. Still off stage. Oh, God. It so oh my friend. Fanning himself violently. She's coming to the edge. What if she could break into bits when she falls off? Still off stage. Ah, 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 ah. Here I go. There is a great thump and then silence. Rabbit listening, frozen. I'm afraid to look. Little girls can't leap like rabbits. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. He starts to see what has happened, terrified what he will, and fans himself furiously. Dear me, oh dear me. The rabbit stops, amazed as Alice enters, brushing the dust from her apron daintily, perfectly placid and full of interest. Curtsying. The end? The question is, is there any such thing? Of course there is. Everything comes to an end sometime. It might just be the beginning, you know. The beginning of what? How can I tell till I know more about you? The fall didn't hurt you at all. That it didn't, and it's very curious because it lasted a very long time. That's Nodding to himself. That's because you belong here. Where am I? That depends on what's going on inside you. I wish you wouldn't talk nonsense. I wish you'd mind your manners. I don't mean to be rude. Then don't be. Doesn't work round here. I fell. Oh, no, wait. Uh, I only ask, where am I? And I told you. You're where you belong, and that depends on what's going on inside you. I don't know what you mean. How do you suppose you got down my rabbit hole? I fell. I was sitting by my sister on the riverbank, and I saw you on the You were talking to yourself, and then you took a watch out of your pocket and looked at it. And that made me so curious, I ran after you. And when you popped down the rabbit hole, I just popped down after you. 
and you entirely forgot that little girls can't go down holes. Well, why yes, I just felt inside of me that I had to see what you were doing. Exactly. And so here you are. And you never once stopped to think about how in the world you were going to get out again? Alice alarmed. Oh dear, I think I'll just go back please. Where, back where I came from. It's one thing to think so, and another to do it. I wish you would have contradict all the time. Oh very well, go right ahead, fall up again. You don't fall, you don't fall up, you climb. The rabbit fans himself, tapping his foot and smiling at Alice significantly. Well, it went up like a wall. I suppose I couldn't climb it. I am supposing it. It's a little frightening. Oh, rabbit, please, I want to go back. It's no use, whatever, to want that. Why not? Every hour is a one-way road. It will take you wherever you please, but it will never take you back again. I want to see the sky. I want to see my kitten. The rabbit fans himself faster, smiling. Isn't there any way to get out of here? Dozens of ways. <clears throat> there is a way for me. He recites. There is a way for me and a way for you and one for Johnny and one for Sue, but you can't go back. And you walk alone, for every Jack has a way of his own. Now, your way is through the garden where the trial is held. How can I get there? You can't. Oh, you're very confusing. First you say, I must go through it, and then you say, I can't. I didn't say that. I said you couldn't go to it. Then how am I to go through it? Answer that. When you belong in the garden, it will come to you. I never saw a garden move. Up, move. <laughs> you never saw much, and that's a fact. Oh, my whiskers. The Duchess. The Duchess. <laughs> Rabbit leaps off, watch in hand. Alice races after him. Wait, please, Rabbit. Why, Rabbit? Wait, I tell you. As Alice disappears, a caterpillar enters, pushing a mushroom ahead of him. It may be in three dimensions, or merely a cutout. It is large enough for him to lean on, climb onto, which he presently does. What a rumpus! Can I never find a quiet place for a smoke? The rabbit re-enters upstage. In great haste, Alice's voice continues offstage, at first pleading, then preemptory. Off stage. Rabbit! 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 Someone's calling you. Can't you keep a still? It puts me out of sorts. You won't talk to her, will you? I can't wait. What about? About her garden. Uh, tell her it would never come to her until she learns to keep her temper. Off stage in fury. It's you. Such a temper. Makes me feel, makes me feel contrary. You best to wait and, uh, and tell yourself, Rabbit. It would make me late. I promised the Duchess to speak at her party. I am to speak. How doth the little? <clears throat> the Rabbit poses and speaks with elocutionary airs and graces. His white gloved hands folded over his stomach, his white spatted feet turned at a precise angle. How doth the busy bee improve such shining hour and gather honey all the day from every fragrant flower? Beautiful, isn't it? If you like, it makes me feel contrary. Off stage. You rabbit, white rabbit. Scurrying off. You tell her about the temper. The rabbit leaves the stage. Calling after him. 
I wonder if she makes you feel friendly. If she makes you feel contrary, I'll be contrary. I won't tell her a single thing. Alice enters. I declare it's too bad for him. Oh! She stops, looking at the caterpillar curiously. Who are you? I hardly know, sir. At least, I knew who I was when I got up this morning, but I think I must have turned into somebody else. What do you mean, explain yourself? I can't explain myself, sir, because I'm not to myself, you see. I don't agree. Well, when I got up this morning, I was just jealous. But a little while ago, I was the size of a rabbit. And now I'm the size of a mushroom. Seeing so many sizes in a day is confusing. It isn't. Well, perhaps you haven't found it here yet. But someday you'll turn into a chrysalis. And after that, turn into a butterfly. You'll feel a little queer then, won't you? Not a bit. Well, it feels queer to me. I think I was somebody stupid. You are. But I'm not. I'm the head of my class. But at least I was. I'll try to know the things I used to know. Four times five is twelve. Wrong. I'll try geography. Um, London is the capital of That's not right, I'm certain. Try some poetry. Okay, I'll recite How Doth the Little. She folds her hands, clears her throat and recites, very proud and proper. How doth the little crocodile improve his shining tail and pour the water of the Nile on every fragrant detail? Some of the words have got altered. It's wrong from beginning to end. You haven't. Oh, it's no use talking to you. I want to find the garden where the trial is. The things you say are of no use to you at all. They are. Make such very short and rude remarks. I don't. Well, you have been doing so. You can't deny that. I'm not. Oh, wait, sorry. I can. Alice stamps her foot, tosses her head, and starts away. Come back, I've important. I've something. Come back, I've got something important to say. Alice comes back after a struggle with herself. Keep your temper. That's all. No. He climbs down and pushes his mushroom off, off stage. What else, sir? Saying is one thing and doing is another. Keeping my temper, you mean? Well, I'll do my best, sir. I'm usually very polite, but things are so queer down here. What shall I do next? Ask the Duchess. Knock on the door. There isn't any door. Disappearing off stage. There is. Well, that's not very civil of There me. is. As, as Alice flounces the centre, she stops to stare at the Duchess's house, which has entered during the last speakers. At the door stands a footman with the face of a frog. Alice smooths out her apron and her hair, speaking softly to herself. That must mean the Duchess's house. Now, I'll keep my temper. No matter what happens, I'll keep my temper. Alice approaches timidly, and as the frog pays no attention to her, she knocks. The frog is still staring up and ahead. Right. There's no sort of use in knocking. <laughs> I'm on the same side of the door as you are. Ethan, how am I to get in? Rivet, are you to get in at all? That's the first question. Holding her temper with an effort. 
I'd like to ask the Duchess the way to the garden. There is a sneezing within. Oh, shoot! <laughs> They're making such a noise in there, nobody would hear you. But what am I to do? Rivet, anything you like. There's certainly too much too pepper in that. Okay, fine. Too much, too little, taste. <laughs> the cook <laughs> thrusts a spoonful of the cook thrusts a spoonful of tannis, who emits a perfect volley of sneezes at the result. The Duchess storms out, singing over all the sneezing, which is added to by the baby she carries and spanks in rhythm. In a sing-song voice, Speak roughly to your little boy and beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy because he knows it teases. <laughs> Be quiet, pig. You call your baby names. If everybody minded his own business, the world would go round a lot faster than it does. I speak severely to my boy. I beat him when he sneezes, for he can thoroughly enjoy the pepper when he pleases. <laughs> the cook begins throwing vegetables out of her pot at the Duchess, who is quite unconcerned when they hit her and the baby. Please mind what you're doing. Tossing Alice, the baby. Here. You may nurse if you like. I've got to get ready to play croquet with the Queen in the garden. She turns at the door. Bring the soup. The house will be going any minute. As the Duchess speaks, the house starts moving. The cook snatches up her pot and dashes into the house. The f to the frog. <laughs> Ella. Tidy up. You, your line. Where? Tidy up and cook to the frog. <laughs> Page 14. Cook to the frog. I can't see any other line. Page 14 in the middle. Oh, tidy up and catch us. <laughs> The frog leaps about, looking at the vegetables, plate, etc. As the frog works, he says, in the garden, would you please tell me? Rabbit, there's no sort of use in asking me. I'm not in the mood to talk about gardens. Well, I must ask, ask someone, what sort of people live around here? Rabbit, to the right lives a hatter, to the left, Lives a March hare. Visit either you like. They're both mad. Oh, I don't want to go among mad people. Rabbit, you can't help it. We're all mad here. He leaps away but turns back. Give me the pig. You shouldn't call the baby. Oh. Rabbit, that's all you know. The frog shakes the hood off the baby's face, disclosing a little pig, ears, snout and all. He leaps away, the pig's face over his shoulder. Which shall I visit, I wonder? I hope they're not quite raving mad. The March Hare hurries in, Alice backs away, watching anxiously. Here's a place, clean as clean, not a single crumb. The hatter is appearing. Help me with the table. The hare and the hatter run off stage. But they didn't seem to see me. I'm going to be polite this time, no matter what they say, because I must find out how to get into the garden. Because of course the rabbit was talking nonsense. A garden couldn't come to me. The hare and the hatter enter with a table. During the following, they bring in five chairs, one armchair for the head of the table, Three small ones for the side, facing the audience, and one for the foot. The movements are so timid, so timed, sorry, can't read, so timed that all the speeches are said on stage. Did you tell the Dormouse to bring the chairs? I couldn't find him. He's asleep. I put him in the teapot. 
Mm, then we'll have to carry him. Teapot and all. Or push him. Be quick. Or the tea will get cold. Mm, you'll have to help me with him. The hare and the hatter bring in the teapot. Yay. <laughs> Large enough to hold the actor. It can be made from a small barrel. They have much trouble getting the dormouse out. Their poking doesn't wake him at first. Then he lifts his sleepy head out of the depths, stretches and settles to sleep again. They take him together, but just as they get him drawn up to his full limp height, he slips down. He hangs over the side. The hare lifts his arm. The hatter leans into the pot to get his feet. When he falls over the hatter's back, pinning him into the teapot. At last, they get him out and lift him into his seat at the table, all the time sound asleep. They pour the tea, the hatter pouring, and the hare holding the cups. The tea is in a small container in the spout. <coughs> they sit on either side of the dormouse, resting their elbows on him and stirring their tea. Alice approaches timidly. Please, will you tell me? No room, no room, no room! <laughs> There's plenty of room. She sits in the armchair. The hare and the hatter stare down at her. Some candy. Looking up eagerly. I don't see any. There isn't any. Then it wasn't very civil of you to offer it. It wasn't very civil of you to sit down here without being invited. The hare and the hatter stare at Alice. I didn't know it was your table. It's laid for a great many more than three. The hare and hatter stare at Alice, saying nothing. Then they drink their tea. If you please, will you tell me? Can we tell her? You don't know what I'm going to ask yet. It doesn't matter what it is. What matters is how you behave. Oscar a riddle! <laughs> is a raven like a ragging bastard. <laughs> I, I think I could guess that one. The hare and the hatter look, look at each other, set down their teacups and then look at each other again. Do you mean that you can find out the answer to it? Exactly so. Then you should say what you mean. I do. <laughs> At least I mean what I say. That's the same thing, you know. Not the same thing, I bet. <laughs> you might just as well say, I see what I eat is the same as I eat what I see. You might just as well say, I like what I get is the same as I get what I like. <laughs> Say that I breathe when I sleep is the same as I sleep when I breathe. <laughs> Have you guessed the riddle yet? Why is a raven like a writing desk? No, I give up. What's the answer? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't the slightest idea. No. <laughs> well. I should think you might find something better to do with your time than asking riddles that haven't even that haven't any answers. Taking out his watch. There's nothing to do with our time here but have tea. It's always six o'clock here. Is that the reason so many tea things are put out? Yes, that's it. It's always tea time, and we've not time to wash the things between whiles. That you keep moving around, I suppose. Exactly so. I want a clean cup now. He calls. One place. Shaking the dormouse. Wake up! Wake up! We want to move! Pour some hot tea on his nose. The hare and the hatter do so, to no avail. It's no use. He won't wake up till half after six. It's very trying to have a watch always at six o'clock. I told you to put some butter in it. Oh, please don't do that. Why not? You'll spoil it. It's the best butter. 
Oh, you mustn't. Did you ever try it? No. Then you shouldn't talk. Hand me the bread knife. Anyway, don't put it with the bread knife. You're bound to get crumbs in it as well. Brightening up. Maybe that's just what it needs. You'll stop your watch. How can I stop it when it isn't going? <laughs> so that I can't, but then hold your tongue. He puts the butter in with the bread knife, listens to the watch, shakes his head, and looks at the hair accusingly. It was the base butter, you know. Try some hot tea. The hatter runs over and dips the watch in the teapot. The hatter shakes the watch, listens to it, and puts it down. Discouraged, the hair to no avail. It's no use. It's still six o'clock. It won't wake up. We'll have to move in. The hair and the hatter have difficulties with the dormouse again. They all move to a key. Alice, who is left with the hairs. This isn't very tidy. It been used before. What's good enough for us is good enough for you. If it was good enough, why didn't you stay there? The rule is move down three places. But now that there are four of us. If you can't be civil, you'd better wait till you're invited. The hand had to watch Alice. She finally sits down after a struggle with herself. It was very nice of you to take me in, I'm sure. I vote the young lady recites a poem. I'm afraid I wouldn't get it quite right. Recite. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Twin Your mouth singing. Twinkle, twinkle. Pinch him, pinch him. <laughs> Doing it, then bowing to Alice. Begin. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. You pinch him. He doesn't mind me. The hair pinched is a dormouse. The dormouse falls asleep. <gasps> now then, recite. Reciting. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little bat. How I wonder where you're at. I'm afraid that's not quite right. There's nothing right about it. Twinkle, twinkle. Sides at once. <laughs> the hare and hatter upset the milk jug in doing this. It can be placed so that it doesn't show any milk in it. Oh, you've spilled the milk. Pick it up at once. You can't pick up milk. You can't do much, and that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> the hare and the hatter watch her. Alice keeps her temper with an effort. She points to the floor above the table. I'd be glad to wipe it up if I had a cloth. That's gone onto the ground too. There's plenty of clean ground. Help us move the table. And mind what you think about while you do it. <coughs> Helping. Please, what must I think about? All manner of things. Everything that begins with an M. Mousetraps, the moon, memory. Muchness. <laughs> why why with an M? Why not? Take some more tea. I've had nothing yet, so I can't take more. You mean you can't take less? It's very easy to take more than nothing. Nobody asked your opinion, or that is, thank you very much. You're quite right. Of course it's easy to take more than nothing. The hare and the hatter nod to each other. Sit down and do it then. Twinkle, twinkle! <laughs> the hare and the hatter go to work at this. <laughs> if you please, <laughs> and excuse me, oh dormouse, oh hatter, oh march hare, will you be so very good as to tell me the way to the garden? Just keep going on the way you're going now. He bows, returning his bow. Thank you. Standing up in the teapot to bow. Goodbye. 
<laughs> Returning it elaborately. Goodbye, O oh Dormouse, O oh Hatter. Goodbye, goodbye, O oh kind March Hare. Animals and the Hatter bow themselves and their props off with increasing ceremony, and Alice curtsies more and more beautifully in, to each in turn as long as they are on sight. Positions are such that she does not see bits of the garden which enter behind from the time of the curtsy. If, she rocks, if the rocks are to be used for the mock turtle and the griffin in Act 2, they come on now. Alice is left alone. Keep on going the way I'm going now, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying right in one place. The rabbit enters during the last bow. The question is, is there any such thing? Of course there is. Every place is one place. Certainly not. For instance, this is the place where you lost your temper, wasn't it? Contritely. I'm afraid so. That's one. And now it is the place where you put it, isn't it? I tried to. That's two. And it is the place where there wasn't any garden, isn't it? And yet I did keep my temper. I was very polite. As the last piece of garden moves into place. That. Three. And now it's the place where it is a garden. That is four. The rabbit fans himself faster. Alice looks around and cries out in delight. Oh, what a lovely garden. But I don't see any place for a trial. How do you know you don't? Well, there ought to be jury boxes where a trial is. I don't exactly know what they are, but I've read about them in the paper. You don't belong in the trial. When you do, the jury boxes will be right here. Will they come when I don't know it, like the garden? Yes, but you'll have to run very fast. Very, very fast. Why must I run if the trial is right here? It'll be one of those times. You have to run as fast as you can to stay where you are, or faster. Annoyed. I wish you wouldn't keep talking nonsense. The garden begins to move away. Of course. If you're going to begin losing your temper again. Hurriedly. I'm sorry. I'm really very, very sorry. The garden returns. I can't seem to help it. All the creatures contradict me so. They say to think I don't amount to anything at all. The question is, do you? I'm afraid I don't amount to much. The creatures all find fault with me. They look down on me. It upsets me. That's because you're afraid you don't amount to much. You'll never belong in the trial till you get over that. Oh, Rabbit, can you tell me how I could stop feeling like that? I can, yes. But it's of no use whatever to tell you. Why not? You'll never know until you've done it. Oh, it sounds sort of easy. Just not to let them make me feel good for nothing. Fanny. That's it. I'm hoping to find someone and begin. I can hardly wait. Alice cocks her head to listen to the mock turtle approaching from off stage. The mock turtle either sings or indulges in chanted lines. Yeah, I won't read the rest. Off stage. Beautiful soup, so rich and green, waiting in the hot terrine. Who for such dainties would not stoop? Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup, beautiful soup, beautiful soup, soup of the evening, beautiful, beautiful soup. Who's that? It's the mock turtle. I never saw a mock turtle. What's he like? He's the one they make mock turtle soup out of, of course. Starting, then stopping. I feel a little afraid. I suppose it's because I'm not used to him. You should be glad of that. The thing to be afraid of is getting used to things. Something you never saw before is exciting. 
come on now, come now, that's so. I have the least idea what a mock turtle is, but I won't let him upset me, that I won't. She skips gaily toward the exit, but stops suddenly. What if I don't amount to much after all? Of course you don't. Nobody does. Don't you? Of course I do. Everybody does. It's very confusing. How can I amount to much and not amount to much at the same time? That's what nobody knows. But you do. Well, anyway, I'm sure I amount to, to as much as that mock turtle because he doesn't sing at all well. And I was chosen to sing on the last day of school. It would be easy not to let him make me feel as if I didn't amount to anything. I declare he's coming here. I'll go by myself and practice. I must begin at once. Alice runs off, waving a hand at the rabbit as the song grows fainter. Looking at Alice, looking after Alice, That'll never work. The way not to feel good for nothing is to forget all about it. And the way to forget all about it is to remember somebody else. Well, I wonder whether she'll come across anyone who makes her forget all about it. Well, it won't make any difference in the taste of carrots. <laughs> Takes a, huge... <laughs> a huge carrot out of his pocket and nibbles at it ecstatically, his whole body quivering with delight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ella's got another hat! Yay! <laughs> Come on, Elle! Act two. At the rise of the curtain, still in the garden, the mock turtle and the griffin are seated centre of the book. The turtle is singing and sobbing. With increasing sorrow, the same song is used in Act One. Alice enters, full of confidence, tossing her hair off her face eager for the conquest she is sure of. The turtle sobs arrest her attention. She approaches softly. What is his sorrow? He hasn't got any sorrow. It's all his fancy, that. What a curious creature. What curious manners. <laughs> but I don't suppose you've had any lessons in manners. Manners aren't taught mm. in lessons. That's all you know about it. <laughs> Very superior. <laughs> it's the very first lesson we had in school. The most old turtle. We called him Tortoise. Why did you call him Tortoise when he wasn't one? We called him Tortoise because he taught us. Really, you are very dull. <laughs> Crestfallen. What else had you to learn besides manners? The different branches of arithmetic ambition, distraction, uglification, and derision. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours a day had you do had you to do a lesson? Ten hours the first day, nine the second, eight the third, and so on. What a curious plan. Disdainfully. That's why they're called lessons. Because they lessen from day to day. Anyone might know that. <laughs> Trying not to feel put down. Well, how did you manage the 11th day? We danced the lobster quadrille. <laughs> I never heard of lobster quadrille. I don't suppose she could dance it with us, eagerly. I think I could, if you'll show me the set. I took a prize in, a, in dancing class a week ago Saturday. Let's begin. The turtle and the griffin begin dancing around Alice, solemnly at first, to their own singing. The tempo increases as they proceed. Alice tries in vain to catch the step. They crowd her, bump her, step on her toes, and finally whirl her from one to the other until she goes onto her knees with dizziness. Oh. Will you walk a little faster, said a whiting to a snail. There's a porpoise close behind us, and he's treading on my tail. See how eagerly the lobsters and the turtles all advance. 
They are waiting on the shingle. Will you come and join the dance? Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, won't you join the dance? There's no use going on with her. She doesn't know anything at all. The turtle and the griffin changed the chorus, mocking at Alice to go on. <coughs> Would not, could not, would not, could not, could not join the dance. Would not, could not, would not, could not, could not join the dance. Alice springs to her feet in fury as they disappear. You stepped on my toes and got in my way. That you did. I wouldn't learn to love the quadrille for anything in the world. The rabbit, who was hurrying by, stops fanning to watch. Did you say wouldn't or couldn't? I said wouldn't, but I'm afraid I meant couldn't. Shaking mm. his head. I thought you did. The rabbit hurries off stage. Alice sinks into the ground. From the bottom and, and meet in an ecstatic hug. A sob from Alice catches their attention. They look at her once and then again, turning their heads together without breaking their embrace. They speak softly. No how. Contrywise. Alice looks up. Tweedledum and Tweedledee watch her immovable, standing sideways as she circles them curiously. As Alice stops staring at them, greatly intrigued. If you think we're waxworks, you ought to pay, you know. If you think we're alive, you ought to speak. I'm very sorry if I was rude, I'm sure. I know what you're thinking, but it isn't so. No how. Contrywise. It, if it was so, it might be. And if it were so, it would be. But as it isn't, it ain't. That's logic. I was thinking that I know who you are. She points to Tweedledum, then to Tweedledee. Tweedledum? Tweedledee? You've begun wrong. The first thing in a visit is to say, how do you do, and shake hands. Tweedledee and Tweedledum hug each other, and each other hold out his free hand to Alice. She hesita hesitates about which to take first, and finally takes hold of both at once. The next thing she knows, they're circling around singing. Here we go round the mulberry bush. She grows more and more pleased as she dances gracefully and correctly. She curtsies to them gaily as, she da as the dance ends. You see, I can dance when it's a sensible dance. Did you think you couldn't? Well, things are so queer lately. Everything I try to do is wrong. What sort of thing? Well, poetry. In trance. Do you like poetry? Do you like poetry? Some poetry, when I know what it means. That sounds clever. Tweedledum and Tweedledee hug each other. The trouble is, not everything that sounds clever is clever, know how? Countrywise! We must find out, is she stupid or does she only seem stupid? We'll try her on a poem. What shall we recite? Uh, the what word it? and the carpenter is the longest. And it has illustrations. I've lost, I've lost, I've lost, I've lost. <laughs> is it middle of page 30? Middle of page 30, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, is it the sort of an examination? To see whether you are clever or stupid. Oh dear. Do you like illustrations? Oh yes, the pictures are the best part of the book. Look behind you. <laughs> Alice turns to confront a large picture of the walrus and the carpenter, which has come on while they talked. <clears throat> Carry on. Oh, what's it about? The Springing walrus. to one side of it. The walrus. Springing to the other. And the carpenter. They were walking together on the seashore and they got very hungry. And they remembered the oysters who lived in the sea. Now comes the first part of the examination. We'll recite the poem. If you're clever, you can tell when we come to the picture. If you're stupid, you can't. 
<laughs> Country wise. Well, begin. Reciting. Oh, oysters, come and walk with us. The walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk, alone the, along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. You haven't come to the picture yet. No how. Countrywise. Tweedledee and Tweedledum hug delighted. Then four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they hadn't any feet. Pointing excitedly. The shoes are here, but you haven't come to it yet because there are more than four. No how. Countrywise. Tweedledee and Tweedledum hug more delighted. Four other oysters followed them, and yet another four, and thick and thick and fast they came at last, and more and more and more, all hopping through the frothy waves and scrambling to the shore. I think you must be nearly there. I'm going to listen very carefully. She turns her back to the picture, watching the two brothers and listening intently. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock, conveniently low. And all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. What were they waiting for? With them and Tweedledee watch Alice cross-eyed, shaking their heads sadly and speaking softly. No how. Country eyes. They must have been waiting for something, you know. Tweedledum fetches a great sigh and Tweedledee follows. Alice looks from one to the other anxiously. <sighs> Don't you feel well? Tweedledum and Tweedledee turn and look at the picture sadly. Alice follows their glance. That's it. That's it. You've come to the picture. Tweedledum and Tweedledee leap up with joy. Alice hugs each in turn. Then they hug each other. Both shake hands. They hold out a hand each to Alice and the three merge into the dance. Here we go round the mulberry bush as before. I passed the first part. Please go on. I can hardly wait for the second. This, just, this is just a little clever, you know. Now we must see whether you can repeat one of the standards correctly. If you're clever, you can. If you're stupid, you can't. Oh dear. Try if you can repeat this. It's the most important part of the whole poem. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings and why the sea is boiling hot, and whether pigs have wings. Now, repeat it. Dubiously, I'll do my best. She clears her throat and folds her hands. The Tweedles do so too. Alice feels for the words at the beginning, but she ends with a burst. The Tweedles' lips move with Alice's throughout. Time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of um, Shoes and shit and stealing wax, of cabbages and kings. And why the sea is boiling hot and whether pigs have wings. That's wrong. I think. Tweedledee and Tweedledum hug and hold out their free hands. Shake. Shake. Sorry. <laughs> They all go into the mulberry dance. I don't think I was ever so happy in my life. I think I'm going to pass. That's only my middling clever, you know. Now we must see if you can make up your mind. That will be very clever indeed. What must I make up my mind about? Which you like better, the walrus? Or the carpenter? Come, that ought to be easy. No, how? Countrywise. Well, tell me what each one did, then I'll know. You must guess what they did from what they said. Go on. A loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Pepper and vinegar besides are very good indeed. Now if you're ready, oysters dear, we can begin to feed. Wait a minute. 
it sounds to me it could be for me what are they going to eat what do you eat with vinegar and pepper oysters i hate that walrus what did the carpenter say you'll hear in a minute he isn't through with the walrus yet it was so kind of you to come and you were very nice the carpenter said nothing but cut us another slice i wish you were not quite so deaf i'd had to ask you twice then he ate them too. I hate them both. But you must choose, you know. Listen to the rest. I weep for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathise. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the largest rise, holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer came there none. But this was scarcely odd, because they'd eaten every one. Now make up your mind. Which do you like better? That's very hard. I think I like the walrus better, because he was a little sorry for the poor oysters. He ate more than the carpenter, though. You see, he held his handkerchief in front of the carpenter, so the, so the carpenter couldn't see how many he took. That was mean. But I like the carpenter better if he didn't eat as many as the walrus. But he ate as many as he could get, and he wanted more. Then I don't like him at all. You must choose, you know, if you're not stupid. It's a puzzler, and that's a fact. How can I like one better when I don't like either of them at all? They're both, both very unpleasant characters. Tweedledee and Tweedledum watch her, cross-eyed, very sad. I'm afraid she can't make up her mind. I can so. Eagerly. Which, which do you like better? Triumphant. Neither one. You can't like anyone better when you don't like him at all. Well, I don't like the walrus and I don't like the carpenter. So I don't like either of them better. It's a foolish question. Hugging it aesthetically. She can make up her mind. Increasing the hug. She's not a stupid child. Tweedledum and Tweedledee both hold out their free hands. She's very clever indeed. They start into the mulberry dance, but are interrupted by a half a dozen or so huge croquet balls, which roll swiftly at their feet. Alice jumps over one or two as they come. Oh, 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 oh. It's the Queen's <laughs> croquet game. Off stage. Off with his head! The Hatter rushes in with the very sleepy Dormouse, holding him by the nape of the neck like a kitten. Though the Dormouse's feet are on the floor as they run, the Hatter hands Alice his mallet, which may be a flamingo, as in the book, or merely some grotesque-sized mallet. To Alice. Here, hold my mallet while I set up this arch. Alice takes a mallet and watches curiously while the Hatter tries to make the Dormouse stand on all fours for an arch. The Dormouse slumps down just as he takes aim with his ball. In the meantime, the cook slides in with a huge tray of tarts and begins secretively stuffing herself with them. Part of the time, turning her head to make sure she is not watched as she stuffs one after another into her mouth. There is a tumult of quarrelling voices off stage. Off stage, above the tumult. Off with his head! Off with your head! On with the game! The frog footman and the caterpillar hurry in and make two consecutive arches of themselves, and the duchess follows with follows a strike with her ball through them. The rabbit bounds in, striking his ball after the duchess. The cook turns around, a tray entirely empty. She wipes her lips and sighs with repletion. Were they good? The cook hurls the tray at Alice and hastily snatches the mallet from the Duchess. Alice dodges the tray, unperturbed, and nods at the rabbit triumphantly. The Red Queen, who is the Queen of is followed by the White Queen, the King of Hearts, the Knave of Hearts, dressed like playing cards, the March Hare, the Mock Turtle, and the Griffon. All are still quarrying vociferously. The Red Queen's voice above them all. At sight of Alice, all stop are outstretched pointing at her. Tweedledum and Tweedledee at one side, arms around each other, watch with anxious sympathy. The rabbit 
to move as all eyes are on her. He finds himself, his head on one side, watching Alice. She tosses her head, self-confident. Who are you? My name is Alice, so please, your majesty. <coughs> Shouting at the top of her voice. Can you play croquet? Topping her. Yeah! She nods again at the rabbit, shaking her hair off her face with a little toss of... See? The knave bows deeply to Alice and lifts her hand to the others who break into song to the tune of Bonnie Dundee. In the full world it was Alice who said, I've a mallet in hand, I've a ball on my head. <laughs> Let the wonderland creatures, whoever they be, come and play with the Red Queen, the White Chorus. Put, can't read that. Put cats in the coffee and mice in the tea and welcome our Alice with 30 times three. Oh, wonderland creatures, quoth Alice, draw near. Tis an honour to see me, a favour to hear. Tis a privilege by a croquet game to see, along with the Red Queen, the White Queen and me. Brilliant. The chorus is repeated. Alice is highly flattered with this, and that the last chorus breaks into a dance, curtsying to one and another during it. Of course, this may be omitted, if desired. She can merely bow elaborately. You're all very kind, I'm sure. But if I am to play with the Queen... Speak, speak when you're spoken to. to. Taken aback. <laughs> but if everyone obeyed that rule, and if you only spoke when you were spoken to, and if the other person always waited for you to begin, nobody would ever say anything. Sharp. What did you mean by, <laughs> I'm to play with the Queen? You can't, sorry. you can't play with us, you know, until you've passed the proper examination. Threatening me. What did you mean? I only said if. She says she only said if. And she said a great deal more than that. A great deal more. I'm sure I didn't mean. You shouldn't have meant. What did you suppose the use of a child about any meaning? Even a joke has some meaning, and a child is more important than a joke. I hope. You couldn't deny that if you tried with both hands. I don't deny things with my hands. Nobody said you did. A can you do addition? Of course I can. What's one and 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 one? Alice covers her eyes, concentrating. All the others keep count on their fingers, holding them up at the end. I don't know. I lost count. It's gone to a two addition. Can you do subtraction? Take nine from eight. Nine from eight. You can't, you know, but she can't do this. Subscri I can't say it. Subtraction. <laughs> she can't do a subtraction in a high voice. Again, I'll take a bone from a dog and our what remains. Well, the bone wouldn't remain, of course, if I took it, and the dog wouldn't remain. It would come to bite me. And I'm sure I wouldn't, I shouldn't remain. I think nothing would remain. Wrong. Dog's temper would <laughs> remain. <laughs> I don't see. She doesn't see. The dog would lose his temper now, wouldn't he? I suppose, I suppose so. Then, if you went away, the temper would remain, wouldn't it? She can't do sums a bit. I can so, if they're proper sums. No one notices Alice's protest. Jenny. 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 Ben. Ben. He's not here. He's not here.
No, it's just Jenny. Oh, no, it's Jenny. not. It's Jenny then. Really? Sorry. Recite your old father, William. I don't know that, but I could recite the walrus and... Repeat it after me. He recites with an old feather. You were old, Father William, the young man cried. The air which has left you is grey. Yet you're strong, Father William, hearty old man. Now tell me the reason, I pray. I think I can remember that. Don't interrupt. In the days of my youth, Father William replied, I remember that youth for fly fast, and the bees not my heath and vigour at first, that I never might need them at last. Mm. I, I believe I can. She folds her hands and clears her throat. Tweedledee and Tweedledum do so with Alice and follows her words with their lips. At first, they show great distress when Alice goes wrong. You are old, Father William, the young man said, and your hair has become very white, and yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age that is right? Some of the words have got altered. Try, try the second stanza. Struggling for composure. In my youth, Father William replied his son, I feared it might injure the brain, but now I am perfectly sure I have none and do it again and again. That's not said right. Very low in her mind. Not quite right, I'm afraid. It's wrong from beginning to end. With a hop toward Alice. How tall did you say you were? I'm four feet and wrong. She never said a word like that. I thought you meant how tall are you? If I'd meant that. I'd have said that. There's glory for you. There's glory! I don't see what you mean by glory. I mean, there's a nice knockdown argument for you. But glory doesn't mean a nice knockdown argument. Passionately. Rabbit, when I use a word, <laughs> it means just what I choose it to mean. Neither more. No, <laughs> the question is whether you can make a word mean so many different things. Rabbit, the question is, which is to be master, you or your words? That's all. That's all. Almost in tears. Well, anyway, I don't believe. She doesn't believe. I'll give you something to believe. I'm just 101 years old, five months and a day. Look, believe that. Friday, draw a long breath and shut your eyes. Alice does so with all her might. Everyone else does so too. As Alice lets go of her long breath, they do too and nod at each other. Yes. Alice shakes her head. No. It's no use. I can't believe in possible things. She can't believe. Contemptuously. I dare say she hasn't had much practice. When I was her age, I always did it for half an hour each day. Sometimes I believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. <laughs> Suspiciously. Did you say? You could play croquet. <laughs> Hopelessly. Well, I used to be very good at it. Let's see you hit the stake. I'll give you three strokes. Hit or off with your head. I don't see any stake. The hatter sets the dormouse up on two feet with considerable difficulty. And he remains awake and upright. The hare puts a mallet into Alice's hand. Yeah. Play. 
The maid picks up the empty tray, the cook flung at Alice, and on it brings her the balls. She takes carefully aim, careful aim, glancing nervously around at the others, who follow all her movements without taking their eyes off her. Leaning down as she does, she straightens up. I wish you wouldn't all keep looking at me. They all look away until she bends down to aim again. When they repeat the performance, every eye intent on Alice, Tweedledum and Tweedledee are in the sympathy with her. The others are not. She finally hits a ball. It is a good shot. But the Dormouse jumps into the air so that the ball passes under his feet. Twinkle, twinkle! <laughs> Missed! Whoa! He jumped up! Home with the king! The whole thing is repeated, except that they crowd closer this time as Alice aims. They all bend down and watch. The Dormouse jumps higher than before, and the cry of the watchers is louder. Twinkle, twinkle! <laughs> Missed! <gasps> Two! In tears. It doesn't a bit. Alice tries. Again, they crowd close and the Dormouse jumps higher than ever. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle! <laughs> <laughs> Missed! Oh, three! Off with her head! Alice throws down her mallet and covers her face in despair. The knave comes to her, his tray still holding balls. The king will part. Oh. The king will pardon you as soon as she's out of sight. He always does. Coming to him. It was a no consequence, your majesty. No consequence at all. Red Queen stands staring at the tray. She lifts one ball and then the other, examining under them. Well, what are the tots? Tots? He stole my tots out all through his head. Executioner! The executioner comes on in haste. Off with his head at once! No, no, your majesty! Silence! It wasn't the name, your majesty! Who are you? Who are you? To the executioner. You can't oh, take oh. off his head. He's had it until he's had a trial. Who says so? I say so. The trumpet sounds off stage. Do, 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 do. Tweedledum and Tweedledee together. The trial's beginning. The trial's beginning. Snatching Alice's hand. Run, run, run. They run faster and faster without progress as they're running in place. Run! She did it. She did it! The rabbit loses ground at this, but recovers with a leap, fanning as he runs. Their bodies bend lower and lower, and their legs go faster and faster. But after the first world dash to the position, no one moves ahead. Cut. Act three. Scene. There are two chairs for the king and queen, and on either side of them are boxes which serve as seats for the jury. The jury is composed of the dormouse, the caterpillar, the hare, the griffin, the turtle and the frog. Others may be added, if desired. At the end of one of the row of boxes is a teapot. At the other end of the mushroom is a mushroom. On each lies a slate and pencil, a platform on which the chairs stand, with steps leading up to them. In fact, even in the jury boxes can be omitted, sorry. The jury can sit across on cross-legged on the floor, bringing in their slates. If the jury box is not used or reference to them in the lines should be eliminated. At the rise of the curtain, the rabbit stands near the thrones in his Herald's dress and holding his trumpet as in the tenial illustrations. Alice and the Red Queen are still running hand in hand. The rabbit blows his trumpet. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> we did it! Oh, we did it! Gasping for breath. <laughs> did what? 
stayed where we were till time for the trial. Now that's speed. It looks like the very same garden we were in when we started to run. You'd have to run at least twice as fast as you can to get anywhere else. It takes everything you've got to keep the clock from turning back. How strange. It happens every day, only you don't notice it. They're going to be late. Come and help them along. If you please, I'd like to rest a little. The Red Queen rushes off stage. I think the trial has really come here. Those look like seats for the judges and those must be for the jury. I suppose that's why they talk about the jury box in the paper. Only there seems to be a great many of them here, but everything else just seems to be just as it was. I declare, I think it's too bad to have to run like that just to stay where you are. It's worse to go backwards, you know. Do you think the knave really stole the tart? <laughs> what is your opinion? Well, I haven't any yet because I'm not sure it was the Queen's tart I saw someone else eat. It would be easier to have an opinion if I knew what I was talking about. You're wrong about that. The less you know, the faster you get an opinion. Anyway, the Queen hasn't any right to say, off with his head, like that. <laughs> That's a real <laughs> smile. Suppose the name didn't do it. Well, that would be all the better, wouldn't it? Of course it would be all the better that he didn't do it, but it wouldn't be all the better his being punished. You're wrong about that. Were you ever punished? Only when I'd done what I shouldn't. And you were all the better for it, I know. Yes, but then I had done the thing I was punished for. But if you hadn't done it, it would be better still, wouldn't it? Puzzled. I suppose so. Just the same, if they punched the poor knave without making sure that it wasn't the cook, I can't stand it. When a thing happens, you can stand it, whether you can or not. Then I won't let it happen. That I won't. Oh no, Whiskers. Here they come. The rabbit leaps to the thrones, and blows his trumpet. The animals enter first, <laughs> running furiously and go to the jury box. The dormouse making a dive into the teapot, the caterpillar mounting the mushroom, each picks up a slate and pencil and begins writing diligently, the pencil squeaking loudly. The executioner, Tweedledum and Tweedledee, the hatter, the duchess, the cook and the white queen now enter and take places on the sides. Then the king and red queen, can't read them, that's uh, tear in and uh, flop <laughs> Flop into their seats, assuming sudden dignity. The knave leaps and kneels at their feet. The rabbit is on one side of the throne and Alice on the other. You're all late. Off with your heads. Gently. You were late yourself, your majesty. We don't mention that. Leaning over the jurors. Are you writing? We're writing down our names for fear we should forget them before the trial is over. All through the court. Read the accusation. Reading from the scroll. <clears throat> the Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them quite away. Consider your verdict. Not yet. There is a great deal to come before that. Threateningly. What? Unabashed, sorry. Well, witnesses. They all subside, looking at each other sheepishly. Meekly. Call the first witness. The cook. The cook comes forward. 
Were you in the kitchen when the Queen made the tarts? I was. You saw her make the tarts? Oh, I oversaw her, Your Majesty. <laughs> was there anyone else in the kitchen? Yes. Woman or man? Man. The jurors write it down with much excitement. Describe his costume. Can't. Didn't see him. That's because she didn't look where he was, Your Majesty. Where was he? He was hiding. Under tables and behind doors. Or in ovens. Or flower barrels or things. Then how did he know he was there? Heard him. What did you hear? He sneezed. Excitedly. Prisoner with a pepper. Doctors, with many flourishes of the pepper pot, the knave sneezes loud and long. The <laughs> other men suppress their sneezes in great anxiety for themselves. King with great satisfaction. The prisoner was in the kitchen. Write it down. That's not proven, Your Majesty. You should try the other men too. Quiet! It's not fair! The rabbit <laughs> blows his trumpet. <laughs> order in the court. The cook may stand down. Shan't! <laughs> Off with her head! I can't go any lower. I'm on the floor as it is. <laughs> Graciously. Then you, then you may stand aside. Call the prisoner. After blowing his trumpet. <laughs> the knave of hearts. The knave comes forward, trembling, his face quivering with fear. Smile in the presence of the king. I said smile, not smirkle. Mouth a semicircle. Jurors listen, clo Jurors, listen closely. I'm about to make a searching test. Prisoner, do you know how tarts are made? I can Bryce answer me. that. I can answer that. You take some flour. Where do you pick the flour? Is it in the garden or the window boxes? It ain't picked. It's grand. How many acres of ground? You mustn't leave out so many things. Flour for tarts isn't measured in acres. It's measured in cups or quarts or barrels. The cook is spelling it wrong. It's of no con it's of no consequence. It's plain he knows how to make tarts. The pussy was hiding under the tables or in barrels, watching the write it down. It proves nothing of the sort. The whole court turns on Alice. Well, anyway, I don't think it does. You, who are you? The Dormouse cheers. <laughs> the executioner puts the cover on the teapot. The dormouse shortly lifts it off again. The hatter springs forward widely. Hold oh, that evidence! There is excitement in the court. Have you fresh eggs? The hatter stares at something unseen in intense excitement and then passes through surprise into deep dejection. No, I, I thought I saw an elephant playing on a fire. <laughs> Looked again and saw it was a letter from my wife. At length I realise, O oh king, the bitterness of life. That's the most important bit of evidence we've had yet. It practically proves the prisoner's guilty. Let the juror consider it carefully.
any of them can't explain it, I'll give them a sixpence. I don't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. If there is no meaning in it, that saves a world of trouble. You know, we needn't try any. But then you can't call it evidence against the poor knave. It's very provoking to be told we can't call a thing evidence. We wish to call evidence. I call anything evidence I wish to do. He wags a finger at Alice and speaks with sepulchral mystery. Impenetrability. That's what I say. Imitating the frog's action and tone. Impenetrability. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me what impenetrability means. <laughs> uh, by impenetrability, I meant just now, we've had enough of that subject, and it would be just as well if you would hold your tongue, as I don't suppose you mean to stop here all the rest of your life, interfering with this trial. So... The frog is on his feet, shaking his fist at Alice at the end of his speech, and the others imitate him. So, calmly, I shall interfere with this trial just as long as it isn't fair. Don't. Alice smiles. The others subside, exchanging shamefaced glances and hanging their heads. The rabbit blows his trumpet softly. Tweedledum and Tweedledee hug each other. Your Majesty must quick examine. With an easy glance at Alice. Where have I must? I must. Where were you when the tarts were set out to cool? In the garden! Did you see anyone there? I saw a cook. Nothing of the sort. Ask him if he spoke with anyone. Did you speak of anyone? He spoke with me. Did he have eaten tarts? He's eaten a great many. <laughs> How do Is you know? Is she going again? <laughs> no, I'm right. I keep glitching now. How do you know? Bridling. He paid me compliments. Oi, <laughs> I deny that. <laughs> you haven't forgotten the identical spot where you stopped me from singing a, di a ditty. But when you said I was plain and excessively vain, I knew that you meant I was pretty. Yeah. In, in despair. I didn't know I meant that. He's too afraid of being found out to know what he meant. I fear that, I fear that he ate them all. Oh, write it down. Stop and nonsense. What sort of evidence is that? Rub it out. The jury does so hastily. The rabbit fans himself daintily. Tweedledum and Tweedledee hug each other. Your Majesty must cross-examine the ditty sung by the cook. With great dignity. Call the ditty. Blowing his trumpet. <laughs> Everyone leans forward. Everyone leans forward. The Duchess holds her hands over her stomach and sings rapidly, but each word is very clear. The tune is Yankee Doodle, repeating the music <laughs> for the third line three times. Singing. There was a pig who sat alone beside a ruined pump. <laughs> the jury who writes furiously throughout a song sings the last syllable and makes a noisy period on their slates with a great flourish. Singing. Um, by day and night he made his moan, it would have tuned a heart of stone, turned a heart of stone, to see him wring his hooves and groan because he could not jump. Singing. Mm. Jump. Singing. Up rose that pig and full jump, uh, and jumped full whack <laughs> against that ruined pump. Singing. Pump. <laughs> Singing. <laughs> 
He first saw red and then saw black and rolled right over on his back. His snout caved in, his bones went crack. It was a fatal jump. Singing. <laughs> jump. jump. <laughs> <laughs> spoke validity when you had finished at the top of his voice <laughs> and he didn't know what he meant that looks very bad they all nod the hatter gives a shriek and rushes to center pointing at some unseen thing over which he drops his hat with great cavorting <laughs> <laughs> The rabbit sounds his trumpet loudly. The king rises and cries even louder than the hatter. Evidence. <laughs> rabbit. 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 The hatter. His hat cautiously. Appointment rises and backs away, his finger still pointing. I thought I saw a rattlesnake that questioned me in Greek. I looked again and saw it was the middle of the week. The one thing I regret, O oh king, is that it cannot speak. The knave shrinks away from the spot the hatter's finger points at, his eyes full of fear. His hand clutches his throat in a terrified whisper. The middle of next week. He looks guilty. He acts guilty. Yes. He is guilty. Oh, oh, we are ready with the verdict. The Dormouse cheers. God. <laughs> um, right, sorry about that. <laughs> Suppress the door, that Dormouse. <laughs> door, Dormouse <laughs> dies down in the teapot himself. He pops out again as soon as a turtle sings. Shall we say it? Or sing it. You couldn't possibly be ready to give it yet. I'll tell thee everything I can. There's little to relate. I saw an aged, aged man a sitting on a gate. Who are you, aged man? I said. And how is it you live? His answer trickled through my head like water through a sieve. And now, if e'er by chance I put my fingers into glue, or madly squeeze my right hand foot in can shoe, or if I drop upon my toe a very heavy weight, I weep for it reminds me so of that old man I used to know. That summer evening long ago, a sitting on a gate. He said he can't call that a verdict. Rivet, I can, and I do. It's just nonsense. Well, you know they call it nonsense if you like. I've heard nonsense compared to which that would be as sensible as a dictionary. The question is, is dictionary ever sensible? Consider the verdict. There's nothing in that song to consider. Loftily. I hadn't come to a verdict that must be whispered. The Dormouse runs to the turtle and, standing on its toes, receives the whispered verdict with squeaks and growing excitement. It then runs to the Hatter and delivers it to his ear. With more squeaks and excitement, the Hatter removes his hat and crosses solemnly to the King. Leaning close to his ear, he stands up again to hand his hat to one of the jurors and cups both hands over the king's ear. He shouts at the top of his voice into it. Our verdict is... Everyone jumps. The king leaps to his feet, furiously. Do you call that a whisper? The hatter swiftly gets back to his place. The king speaks with recovered dignity. 
<clears throat> if you do such a do such a thing again, I'll have you buttered. Alice giggles. <laughs> Silence. He puts a hand to his head and thinks intensely. Rule forty-two: Any children who laughs out loud must leave the court. That's not a regular rule. You invented it just now. It's the oldest rule in the book. Then it ought to be number one. Hastily. On with the execution. Between the knave and the executioner. You can't do that. The idea of having the execution first. You haven't even had a sensible trial yet. First the execution, then the verdict. Nothing of the sort. Anyway, we have had a trial. <laughs> you haven't called all the witnesses. I have some evidence to give. In great haste. Your Majesty, here is something that was picked up in the garden. A scroll. He hands the king a scroll. What's in it? It seems to be a letter written by the prisoner. Oh God, where are we? Who is it directed to? It isn't directed at all. That's the strange part of it. Is it in the prisoner? No, no, it isn't. And that's the queerest thing about it. He must have imitated someone else's hand. Please, Your Majesty, I didn't write that, and they can prove that I did. My name's not signed at the end. There's no name signed at the end. If you didn't sign, it matters worse. You must have meant some mischief, or you design a name like an honest man. That proves his guilt. It doesn't prove anything of the sort. You don't even know what the letter is about. Harold, read it. The rabbit takes the scroll and unrolls it. It is five to six feet long with some rolled scroll at the bottom still. It is backwards, looking glass, writing, and there is a murmur of astonishment and suspicion from the court. It isn't oh. a letter at all. It's a set of verses. He's disguised his handwriting. It's a secret code. Uh, it ain't mine. I couldn't write like that if I tried. <laughs> Don't try to pull the wool over my eyes. You've written it yourself, can read it. Very well, read it yourself. Begin to go on till you've come to the end. I can't read it. Can anybody else read the scroll? No. Then it's plain, he wrote it. No one could, on, person, on, on purpose. There's no telling what's in it. You don't know whether it's terrible till you know what it says. Anyway, nobody knows the name wrote it. Read it yourself if he didn't write it. Either he wrote it for himself alone, or somebody else can read it. Isn't that true? It sounds true, but there's something wrong about it. Read it yourself then. The Dormouse cheers. No, we got him! 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 <laughs> so trust that dormouse off of his whiskers. Move him from the court. Sarah. <laughs> Several carried the dormouse out in the teapot. <laughs> no, we got him. No, we got him. Seems to me I have seen writing like that somewhere before. Hey, or watch Alice intently, but she doesn't notice them. Mm. If I could remember where I stood and what I was doing, yes, I was combing my hair in front of the looking glass. 
textbook in class writing. Uh, all you have to do is read it backwards. The title is Jabberwocky. If she's so sure of that, let her read it. Your Majesty, let her read it without a stop. I give you 182 seconds. The jurors begin tapping with their pencils on their slates and all the others join in, each in his own fashion, in keeping the rhythm going. It gets faster and faster. Alice keeps perfect time with them, going at last at lightning speed, but with every word perfectly clear. Reciting, reading. Jabberwocky, twas brillig and the swipey toe did gear and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borough grows and the moan wrath outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that cap. Beware the jub jub bird and shun, the frumness bandersnap. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the magsum quo he sought. So he rested he, for he by the tum tum tree and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whiffing through the tallgate wood, and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the bauble blade went snick, snack. He left it dead, and with its head, he went galumping back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, grab to say, kalu, kalu, he chortled in his joy. <laughs> 182. Her hand on the knave's head. Save. To the king. How do we know? How do we know that what it what says? It says? Just turn it around and you can see for yourself. The rabbit and the other animals turn it so the light comes through it and can be read. There. Hold your tongue! Off with your head! To the executioner. Off with her head! The executioner strides to Alice, axe uplifted, followed by the king and queens in royal rage. Alice faces them unflinchingly. Who cares for you? You don't amount to anything. You're nothing but a pack of cards. Alice blows at the executioner contemptuously. He is whirled around as if by a high wind. As she chases him, still blowing, he is blown off stage together with the king and queens who try to interfere and are greeted with gusts from Alice and go whirling off in different directions. There is a great whirling and scurrying from all the others as Alice bounds about, blowing with all her might. The knave whirls off stage in a dance of joy. Tweedledum and Tweedledee hug in ecstasy and whirl off the rabbit blows his trumpet now and again in delight at Alice's courage and all the others leap and turn and bound away carrying whatever props they are concerned with Alice is left alone on an empty stage dizzy with her own bendings and turnings <coughs> laughing in triumph she sinks to the ground her laugh fading she is asleep <laughs> <laughs> From off stage come the voices of Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Oh. She, she doesn't feel good for nothing anymore. No how. Country wise. The rabbit's trumpet sounds softly off stage. <laughs> In a vanishing voice. No how. Very faint. Country wise. Flashing note of the trumpet is heard. Very far away, there is silence. If a kitten is available, it comes to Alice. We <laughs> 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 just keep trumpeting. Alice sits up, rubs her eyes, looks around in delight. If kitten is available. <laughs> Tea, tea. Cut. 